What's going on guys? Welcome to another bike commuting vlog here in Japan. I wanted to make this video last week, my full ride back home, my full commute. And for those of you who watched that video, you know I flatted not once, but twice. So today we're back where we started. We're gonna be redoing that video. We've got nice weather today and hopefully I'm not gonna flat, although I did just say the curse word before we started. I learned my lesson and I've got some extra equipment now. So this is a new kind of like toolbox that I bought. And inside here, I can store all of my stuff that I need. So I've got some electric tape, some tubes, and I'm actually carrying two tubes. And I also invested in a puncture kit. So I've got my puncture kit in here, and I've got my tiny little lock. You only need tiny locks in Japan. So it's really nice and convenient. It just fits all in this toolbox, and I can transfer this between my road bike, my cyclocross bike, which is my main commuter bike. And it's got this nice little slit here, so it fits in here. I've also got some new tires on here. I had to go back to the Gator skins. I tried something new recently. I tried the Schwalbe Duranos and it failed. On the first ride, I got a stapler going through them. So just gonna stick with what I know. Gator skins, hopefully get some bigger guys on here later. I've still got my cross tires up here. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Let's get going. I've got a 20 kilometer ride home. Start ride. Good thing it reminded me. We've also got some strong wind today, but I'm hoping it's gonna be a tailwind. I always try to check the weather. People ask me, how do I get such good audio in these videos? It's a combination of using an external microphone. I also check the wind conditions to make sure that it's not a giant headwind when I'm filming these, otherwise it's not gonna turn out that great. So one of the nice things about my commute is I have very few lights that I have to go through, very few places where I have to stop. I mostly commute along the river path, but the beginning and end of my commute, I of course have to ride on some of the main streets. I try to stay on some of these side streets. Lots of people over in the park today. I bet there's gonna be a lot of people over at the dog park. I'll make sure to go by nice and slow so you can see all the beautiful dogs they got there. Today's video, there's no specific theme, anything that I want to talk about. I just wanted to make a full documentation of my full ride home so I can share that with you guys for those of you guys who are interested. I made the full video of my ride to work already. This will be the ride back home. But in future videos, I definitely want to have a certain talking point that I can talk about during the video. So it's a busy time right now, a bit dangerous. So sometimes it's easier to turn and then turn again to cross the street. This is the time when most people finish work here. It's about 5.30, 6 o'clock. This is the train line for anyone who's interested. So it is possible for me to take the train to work. I prefer not to. I actually did it for the first time last week because it was raining and I had my bike left over at our, um, left at my work because of a event. I went to work the Mount Fuji event. I went to work the Mount Fuji hill climb event. And so I had to leave my bike at work. So I took the train in in the morning while it was raining and it was just kind of a perfect way to go get the bike, but it was horrible. It took twice as long as the bike commute and it was just crowded, not pleasant at all. I thought I could get some work done or some studying done while I was there, but it was too crowded. I couldn't do anything. This is a nice little old style Japanese street. I always like coming through here. You see some cool old buildings but it's super narrow and a lot of cars are trying to speed through here. There's not enough room for cars to go both ways. So it ends up 
just being a horrible traffic nightmare sometimes. But right now is nice. No one's here on the way home, it seems. We've even got some vending machines. Also got a nice little temple here. It's crazy the variety of things you see here. There's another entrance. Hill number one. <laughs> I kind of joke, people are saying, your flat's so commute, it's so easy. And yeah, I'm not complaining, I'm not a climber. Sun starting to set over there. I also got some questions asking if I do the same commute when it's dark. And it gets dark super early here in Japan. There's some things about living in Japan that are really great and some things that really suck. And one of the things I hate the most about living here, let's go a different way. Last time I went that way, today we'll go this way. I'll show you guys something new. So if I go down here, I enter into the park, oh, but then we'll miss the dogs. Oh, well, we can still see them from up here. There's a nice golden retriever. So we end up going the same direction here, um, but yeah. I, in the winter, it gets dark super early. Even in the summer here, it gets dark generally around like 6.30, 7 o'clock, which is really early compared to my hometown. My hometown in Michigan, which is more in the northern part of the US, it gets dark around 9 p.m., sometimes even close to 10 p.m. So I really love those late sunsets. There's nothing worse than finishing work and it's already dark. So actually when I started doing my training here, these things are interesting. I have no idea why they're here. Maybe to help with like flood control or something. Someone else asked about what this tower was. It's actually not a tower, but it's kind of like a dam. But up here, we got a nice view of the river. Over there, you can see, over there, you can see Nagoya city. That's the center of the city. So this is the sort of dam. Mini dam. And here we got the dog park. Some big guys in there today. Always a lot of people out on the sunny days. So yeah, when I first started this new job, um, for those who don't know, I work for a cycling distribution company here in Japan. I started training for my new job this last winter actually. So around like, December, January, and at that time, it was really dark. So in the morning when I would leave for work and in the evening when I would finish work, it was dark. And let me tell you, it's, it's hard enough sometimes to get the motivation to ride your bike to work every day, especially when you're tired and you got a lot going on. Combine that with super dark, super cold conditions, uh, it definitely made me tough and started preparing me for my regular daily commute now. So it's a lot nicer now, finishing, seeing some beautiful scenery here. But winter was tough, I'll say that. Some other people asked if it snows here, and in central Japan, it doesn't really snow that much unless you live in the more mountainous areas like Nagano in the Japanese Alps, the Minami Alps. There's some snow there, but here it only snows like once, twice a year, which is kind of unfortunate, but we're close enough to the mountain so I can just take a bus there and go snowboarding if I want to. But that's good for commuting because I don't have to worry about any snow on the course or getting like a super bomb-proof bike or anything like that. There's not much precipitation in general in the winter, so the worst thing you have to deal with is just some freezing rain days. That's about it. If you missed the last video, this is Shonai Ryokuchikoen. There's actually a cycling course here. We'll make a video about that soon, one day. Nice little park to pass through on the way to work and the way home. And we got 
all the grass patches now. Looks like they cut the grass recently. Smells like freshly cut grass. I love that smell. It's another thing I miss about living in the US. In the US we have large yards like this, like grass around the property. And I grew up with that being kind of normal. Even if you're not a wealthy family, if you live not in the center of a city, you're gonna have a yard to maintain. And so it was one of my favorite things growing up as a kid, mowing lawns. Dude, make so much money doing that. You just, you have your lawn mower, you go around your neighbors and you cut the grass, so you get like 15 bucks. That was a great way to make money as a kid. Got a nice tan, but there's no yards, no property management like that in Japan. It's all just sort of sand. So here we are, we're starting on the first main river segment of the day. This is Shonai River, which is the same as the Shonai name from the Shonai Park back there. One of the larger rivers here in the Nagoya area. And these river paths aren't entirely made for cycling. They're kind of made for everyone to use, kind of like for emergency access, for cyclists, for walkers, for runners. Um, but there's nothing like specifically built into it for cyclists, but you can see there's not too many people out here. So usually it's pretty empty, which is nice. It's the way I like it. We got some runners up here in their short shorts. And I hope the mic picks up this audio, the wind just blowing all these bushes. Beautiful sound, nice relaxing sound. I gotta say, I love the ride home a lot more than I like the ride going to work. So yeah, the riding in the work, you feel kind of fresh, you feel energized to start the day, but riding home is great. You have nothing else to worry about for the rest of the day, usually, unless you're a YouTuber, then you get to edit videos late at night, but now looking forward to going home, see the wife, get some nice dinner. My wife's a great cook, by the way, so I'm very spoiled. I get some nice, delicious food almost every day. My wife's also bike commuting now. I'm sure a lot of you guys on this channel have already seen her bike commuting video I just uploaded, but if not, go check it out. She started a new job recently and she's commuting, it's about five, six K one way. So in total, she's doing about 12 K round trip every day, which isn't anything like crazy, but she's enjoying it, enjoying being on the bike. She's using her road bike. Some people asked what she's doing and I forgot to mention that in the other video. So I'll say that now she's working for, it's the same company she used to work for when she was on the JITCO kind of cheap labor program here for a couple years. And when she worked there then, she was a normal factory labor. So it's for a car industry factory. There's a lot of car industry factories in Nagoya through the Toyota connection. So she did a lot of like parts checking, repetition work, factory work. And I wasn't really happy with her doing that job. I didn't want her to continue that job because it's obviously not the healthiest job to do. No golf, by the way. That guy's got his golf stick. <laughs> but so I was really against her going back there, but there was an opening for an office position there. So now she's able to work in an office, work with a computer, which is completely new for her. She's not like kind of like the college educated type using a computer type. So it's a nice new challenge for her to work in an office environment, improve her Japanese, we communicate in Japanese, but obviously our Japanese isn't perfect. We're not native. It's our second language and we're using that to communicate. So overall, a great opportunity. She gets to exercise every day. She gets to challenge herself with the computer. Um, OL is office lady, by the way, for people who don't know. It's some slang terms in Japanese. Futsu no oeru desu. We got some commuters up here. And you see that line of cars? That's horrible. Every time I see that, it puts a smile on my face that I'm riding my bike. 
even if I have a flat tire like the last time, this is way better than waiting in that ridiculous line of cars. So we're actually about to merge onto that road up here. This is probably the most dangerous section of the commute. I get a lot of comments saying like, the riding in Japan is so peaceful and so great. And that's because I'm intentionally riding on the nice roads. But I'm hoping to venture out, show you guys some of the more uh, active roads, <laughs> I guess is the right way to say it. Here we go. Be careful merging on. And this is only about 200 meters, fortunately. But a super narrow road. And you see all those, you saw all those cars back there backed up. So they get really angry when they get a chance to open up like here. They just floor it. And this road is obviously not wide enough for two cars, a normal size cars anyway. So it just creates a dangerous situation of fast cars going both directions and nothing to slow them down. And of course I have no shoulder here. Almost there. There's actually a car coming up behind me. I'm going to signal, get over to the right, get ready to cross. All right, no cars. Here we go. I love this bridge as well. Over here. Over here, we've got the beautiful sunset. I love days like this. Stunning view. And over here, is the direction we're going. We're going east. You can see some of the mountains over there. That's where I do some of my training rides. And we got the beautiful Shonai River here. But we're crossing over to the Yada River over here. That's apartments over there, by the way. Sometimes on the super windy days, it makes a strange noise on these sort of like panels here. And it's really scary. It's really hard to cross this. Even today, the wind is pretty strong. It's a bit scary crossing. Fortunately, the wind's going this way and that's the direction we're going. Hopefully we get a nice tailwind from here. This is the secret entrance to the cycling course, river course. This is a Japanese soccer field. <laughs> like I said, there's not much grass in Japan. Everything's done on sand because it's easier to manage. Sometimes I see a group of like Vietnamese people playing soccer here after work. Not here today, unfortunately. Another thing I like to do during my commute is mix in my training. This section is great for intervals at times because there's a lot of KOM segments along the way, but depending on the time of day and how lucky you are, you might get a lot of walkers on the course. And of course, it's not a good idea to be doing sprint intervals when you pass pedestrians. So I usually make sure I slow down if I'm doing intervals and see a pedestrian. It's just way too narrow here to be mixing the two on this path. So a bit unfortunate. That's the other good thing about commuting in the winter. There's no one out here. It's so different riding here in the winter and riding here in the summer. The other thing I like about the summer ride here is the shadows. It's like I'm chasing myself home. Gives you that extra little motivation, I guess. So 
So I'll try and point out some other interesting things along the way that you might not notice. For example, there's some toilets over there. Another great thing about Japan is the access of like bathroom or restroom facilities. If you know the right places to look, you can generally find a free public toilet that you can use. At first when I moved to Japan, I thought that was one of the things I hated the most about Japan. It's like, there's no toilets anywhere. But as I learned to navigate my way around, I started to figure out where all the toilets are. And there's a bunch of them. So always a nice place for me to stop if I need to have a potty break during my commute. It's a bit dangerous right now with, there's lots of birds that sort of hide in here. And when this floods over, it gets covered in the sand from the river. So this is one of the sections I'm glad to be on a cyclocross bike for, gravel bike for. I do commute with my road bike occasionally. I wanna make a whole video dedicated to that. So commuting on a road bike versus a cyclocross bike versus like a hybrid bike or mountain bike, which one's best and which one you should use. So I'll talk about that in a separate video, but for now, I'm very happy to be on a cyclocross bike on this route. Sometimes you gotta be careful for random things like these, like if you accidentally ride into a path like that, it's gonna hurt. Got some skateboarders out here. It's the first time seeing these guys. You see a lot of random people out here practicing different things. Uh, because it's a bit, it's one of the few places in Japan where you have this much space that's free to use. So I see some people out here on like practice summer skis. So they're kind of like roller blades, but skis. I see some old guys out here uh, doing their unicycle practicing. I see people playing tennis, banging the tennis ball against the, the bridges. Lots of different random people out here. So this whole section's cut the grass recently as well. Which is nice, it always helps to be able to see around the next corner. That guy had his skateboard in his backpack. I did a similar thing the other day. I had to bring my skateboard back with me after I picked up my bike, so I, I like wrapped it to my backpack because it didn't fit inside. It was a fun day. So some, might as well talk about some other exciting things that are going on in my life lately. So today at work, my new bike or my first new bike arrived so i'm really excited i'm gonna make a video introduction for that leave a comment with what you think it is so it's my first new bike from bmc and another hint it's a model year 2019 and uh, any hint i say will give away what it is so anyway leave your comments below what do you think is my new bike and i'll be announcing that on the channel very soon some other exciting news. I'm heading to Italy on Friday. So we have our global distributors meeting for BMC, which is an annual meeting. And this year it's being hosted in Italy. So I'll be going to Florence, Italy for a few days, testing out some of the new bikes. And I'm crossing my fingers that I'll be able to film some video with the new bikes. I won't be able to upload it right away, but I'll make sure I get it ready for when those bikes are publicly released and I can share those with you guys. There's some bikes I'm really excited to test out. For example, I really want to get a new commuter bike. I love this bike, but I really hate uh, bike maintenance. So that seems to be the theme of today's video, things I hate. And I absolutely hate bike maintenance. I hate having to change tires, tubes. I hate having to clean my chain after a ride and getting a dedicated 
commuter bike with a belt drive seems to be the way to eliminate all of those problems. So I really want to test out the new uh, or the BMC Alpine Challenge hybrid bike with a belt drive. I've never ridden a belt drive bike before and if I like the bike when I test it I'm definitely gonna buy or <laughs> if I convince my wife to let me buy another bike I've already got two on order for myself and two on order for her so that'll be us buying five bikes this year. Uh, have to convince her somehow but there's definitely it definitely pays for itself these kinds of bikes unless you already have a commuter bike like this guy so maybe I should control myself control my urges so here we are still along the river sometimes you can't see the river too clearly but here you get a nice view sometimes you get some people out here fishing I've oh, got some kids out here practicing their bike skills. This is interesting. So that's another great thing about cycling in Japan is it's not a super popular sport for like young kids but you often if you're in the cycling areas will see groups of kids like that and it's always great to see young kids into cycling and having a group that they can enjoy the sport with together when i was growing up i started mountain biking primarily as a, a way to get to like my soccer games i was a soccer guy and in between I would ride through these mountain bike trails and I really enjoyed it. I started, I entered a race randomly because it was right by my house and really enjoyed it but I never had like young people the same age as me when I first started getting into cycling. And I was always kind of jealous of places where I had that community. This is another one of the rough sections on the commute that makes me glad I'm not on my road bike and some rough bricks down here uh. got all these birds get out the way oh, they're hunting for the leftover mulberries it was mulberry season here last week and it was insane. There were so many people out early in the morning picking all the mulberry trees, getting all the berries before other people came to take them. It was crazy. Uh, all these flies, I hate these flies, they're horrible. Today's turning into such a negative video. But here we are in one of the last sections of this river path. Cars stuck in the red light again. thinking to get like one of those Japanese Asian face masks and wear for my evening ride home because sometimes these flies are really nasty. It doesn't help that I'm trying to talk while I'm going through a swarm of them. Oh, we got another golf guy here. There's another restroom right there.
This section here is actually my, uh, this is where I practice cyclocross with my Japanese buddy Hiroki. It's pretty close to home now and it's a great little course, some stairs, some flat sections. So in the winter, I'll be here practicing my cross skills. And over here on the left side, we got this kind of little nice garden thing that some of the local volunteers are maintaining. Really nice. It's another great thing about Japan is just how well maintained things are. There we go, no golf. That guy back there, all the old guys love breaking the golf rules. So this section actually cars are allowed to come in so they can park for their kids' baseball practice. Watch out for those little dogs. That guy wasn't on a leash, but he wasn't moving. Ah, it's actually soccer practice over here. And then baseball over there. Baseball is really popular in Japan. Don't need to tell you guys that. They all ride here on their mama chedis. And then their family comes out to watch, support. One more quick little skill section here, and then we'll be on the main roads for the rest of the way home. Shift down for the climb. Here we go. I got a lot of questions asking if you can cycle on sidewalks here. This is the sign to look out for. Shows a pedestrian and a bike. But the thing you need to be aware of with those signs is it doesn't mean you are equal with pedestrians. Pedestrians are the king. Pedestrians have the right of way in almost any situation. So if you're on this path and you're trying to go fast and there's a group of people walking really slow, walking their dogs, you have to slow down and go safely around them. So this path gets pretty narrow at times and sometimes it's hard to move at a decent pace. Just depends on how lucky you are, I guess. Not too many people out right now. Some people suggested I should get a bell, but I don't know, I really don't like bells. It just seems kind of like rude. I normally just say like, sumimasen, which is the Japanese way of like, excuse me. And you shouldn't be blowing by people blasting your bell anyway. Yeah, this is the section you gotta be really careful on. You really know here. Got some nice apartments here. I'd love to live in a section here, just right close to the river path. Instant access to the city, to the mountains. And here, we're actually gonna drop down. A little shortcut. This is a pet town. Happy Pet Town. <laughs> and here we go, traffic light number two.
Don't see too many scooters in Japan. So this is the Kanaregawa Cycling Roro. But, or it's actually safer and faster to go on the main road here because that one is super narrow, full of pedestrians and bumps from like tree roots growing in to the path. So we're gonna ride down here. This place always smells like food, so it's really a torture when I ride by here in the morning and in the evening because I'm hungry. I don't normally eat breakfast and I don't normally eat too much after lunch, so I'm usually hungry while I'm riding. And yeah, that place is always making me extra hungry. Shadow is starting to get really long now. Not too much daytime left. A lot of Japanese ladies will really cover themselves as much as they can. They try not to get tan. It's a really big thing here. Whereas in America, most girls want to get tan. It's kind of the opposite here. All right, Let's go what we can. Always gotta be careful. People just pop out from anywhere. Let's actually hop on the cycling road real quick so I can show you guys. It's not much of a cycling road and it's generally taken over by pedestrians, but actually I just saw the sign that this is a walking course, but you can ride your bike here as well. I did a nice Sakura video here, cherry blossoms. These are all cherry blossom trees, so in the spring it's super beautiful. I'll link the video in case you're interested in checking that out. But yeah, you can see all these bumps. This is not pleasant, so I'm gonna hop off of here. You do get some nice views though. These sections are supposed to be super safe because cars are supposed to wait to let you go. They don't always do that. But sometimes you get a nice one who will stop and let you pass. When I, I took my driving test here in Japan recently and they were really strict about that, making sure you always check for those uh, sort of dashed lines sections there's a pedestrian there you need to stop and you need to be cautious for them but most people are busy during rush hour they're just focused on getting home like me too bad they're not on bikes <laughs> so you'll see lots of bikes as we pass every apartment pretty much every apartment will have at least one bike in front of it most people most families in Japan have a bike 
So that sign we just passed, it says no entry for cars and scooters, but other vehicles like a bike are okay. Just gotta be careful because the general flow of traffic is gonna be the opposite way. More bikes. So Japan's definitely a very cycling friendly and popular cycling culture kind of country. So not popular as in like people like cycling, but it's just built into the main infrastructure. It's the way people get around. People view it as a method of transportation, not necessarily like a toy. Whereas in the US, a lot of people have the image that riding bikes is for like kids and it's not something that adults do. Uh, so this person stopped. Thank you. But in Japan, it's the opposite because everyone rides their bikes to get places. So you'll see lots of bachans like grandmas on their bikes going to the grocery store. You'll see lots of kids going around, going to school. It's an actual method of transportation. And that's the way I think a lot of Europe views it as well. Unfortunately, that's one thing that the US is really uh, lacking in, or really behind in. These flowers are really nice this time of year. I think they're, what were they called, ajisai? Something like that. I'm not too knowledgeable about flower names. I'll leave that to my wife. Another dog walker here. You'll notice that most of the dogs here are really small. In my mind, I, I don't like to think of them as dogs. In my mind, they're not real dogs. They're... There's two words for dog in Japanese. One is wanchan and one is inu. So I view them kind of more as wanchan, kind of like small dogs or like cute little dogs. And then I view like inu as like a real dog. But it's okay. I like all dogs, but I prefer big dogs. So here we are back on one of the busier roads. So this is the other danger section. There's really only two dangerous-ish sections during this commute. And that's that first small river road in this section here. But nothing too bad. So we've got our sign here. We're safe. A lot of people were giving me crap about riding on the sidewalk here. But as you can see, it's legal and I'm gonna go on the main road anyway. So this road's actually not too bad. You can see we've got a small lane, um, a small little gap here for bikes to ride through. It's really dangerous when it suddenly like ends and disappears and then comes back in. Because then you have to merge in with traffic coming behind you. There we go, got, not, got a little bit bigger here, so that's nice. But you can see it just randomly disappears here. We've got a city bike shop here. Another bathroom over there. And we got a red light. So I'm going to cross here. Take it nice and slow. So yeah, if you ever ride on the sidewalks in Japan, even if it is legal, you don't want to be a jerk and do anything reckless. So we're turning here. It's always good to avoid the main roads as much as possible. Usually there's a nice road behind it that'll parallel it that's not that busy like this one. So that's pro tip for cycling in Japan. Find the alternate route. 
and save yourself the headache of dealing with the, the crazy roads. Got a small little park here and there's a, another bathroom. Like I said, the bathroom's everywhere. Just gotta know the right place to look. But small parks like that in Japan are really small, like really disappointing coming from America where we just have these giant parks and that's my standard, that's what I'm used to. So I was kind of disappointed when I saw Japanese parks for the first time. I'm like, there's nothing to do here. There's no space, you can't do anything. But it seems that most people seem to be pretty content with it here. So you gotta watch out for these signs. Watch out for kids just running around. Tobidashi Chui. You see lots of signs like this all over. And this is saying, be careful if you're on a bike, make sure you stop and check both directions, which I'm doing. I've got my chest mount on, for those of you who are interested in how I film these videos. And the chest mount doesn't really show how much I'm looking around, so I try, I've actually trained for this a lot, like moving my head without moving the chest mount to try and get as good a video. So it's not just using the chest mount on these, it's not just using the chest mount to film these videos, but it's also being consciously aware of how you're moving and that's become part of my writing style when I film these videos. So I am actually checking left and right. It just doesn't show because I've mastered that art, I guess. This building over here is what's called a juku, which is a cram school. So it's where Japanese kids go after school so they can go to school extra after school. It's like after school. I'm sure there's an English word for that. I'm forgetting English, by the way. And if I come here on my later days when I have some overtime, I'll see that place packed with like bikes and kids going there for their after school studies. Feel really bad for them. I would hate to go to cram school. That's one thing. If I have a kid and raise them in Japan, definitely not gonna force that cram school culture on them as much as I can help it. And the left turn here. Another tiny little park. I'm sure there's a restroom in here as well. So let's actually finish this video with a slightly alternative route. Normally I go that way, and on my video ride to work, I came from that way, but I wanna pass by another nice little uh, sort of city section here that is nice, to pass to, is nice to pass through sometimes when I go home. Here we go. So this is the closest main subway stop to where I live, Fujigaoka Station, it's the end of the main yellow line in Nagoya City. So if I ever need to go into the city, I usually come to this stop. And it's pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff all around here, different restaurants, different izakayas. And so if you're ever looking for a fun night out, this is the place to go, nearby me anyway, without going all the way into the city. So generally, I try and ride in the less busy areas as much as I can help it. But every once in a while, I like to mix it up and sort of be around people, I guess. So this is actually a sort of scramble style crosswalk. These are pretty common here in Japan, so people cross um, from all directions for the pedestrians at once. 
and they separate it completely from the car traffic, which is really safe. It's a really good idea. I like it a lot. If you're on a bike, it gives you double chances to go because you can go with the cars. This is a nice little ramen shop underneath the train line. Really cool. And so here, there's actually two trains. There's the Linimo, which is a maglev, one of the few maglevs in the world. And we've got our subway line, which goes to the city center. And the maglev will take you over to Toyota. So again, some cool things here. We've got karaoke here. And we've got grocery store here. And one of our favorite Japanese restaurants, Kokoichi Curry. These guys are going left, so we can go straight. This is the commuter line. Another cool thing I wanted to show you guys was over here, we've got a designated bicycle parking area. And that's indoor. And we've also got one here, which is outdoor. So this one's, this section here is for motorbikes, scooters. But if we go down here a little bit more, you'll see all the commuter bikes here. And there's a machine there, so you can use your IC card. It costs about 100 yen a day. So I use this sometimes when I take the train into the city. I'll ride here. And over here is actually where they park the trains at night. So a pretty cool sight to see those here at night. All the lines over there. The only bad thing about this road is a lot of cars try and cut through here as well and it's super narrow for them to go both directions. Stop sign here, but none of the pedestrian bikers really stop. They just sort of bomb into every corner. That's why actually some of the more dangerous people here when you're biking in Japan isn't the cars, but it's people like this who just don't follow any cycling rules. Blame it on the young people. And here we're going to cross over here and cross over here as well. There used to be a really good barbecue restaurant here, but it's changed to Yakiniku. Really disappointing. There's way too many Yakiniku restaurants here. I really like that barbecue place. Anyway guys, I'm pretty much home now, so I'm gonna end today's commute vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed following along on my full commute back home. If you watch the full video, then props to you. <laughs> and we'll see you next time here on Tuo Cruise with some more cycling vlogs and life in Japan vlogs. If there's any topics that you want me to go over in a future video, any questions you want me to answer, leave those down below in the comments. If you like these kinds of videos, Give it a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. And if you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe. But I'm sure if you're at this point in the video, you've subscribed already. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.